thing is menstruation. It's huge amounts of human vibrations. Religion versus spirituality. I mean, sex sells, right? And friends, you are thinking about it. A little less than a year ago, I went vegan. Being vegan is not easy, for reasons different than you might think. It is not difficult to not eat meat. What's hard is having bacon dangled in front of my face by my older brother, and having to explain to my stepbrother that eating meat once a month is not going to do me any favors. Veganism. A topic that involves a lot of questions like, where do you get your protein from? Are you really going to be vegan forever? Or, if you were on a desert island, would you kill to eat? <laughs> or ridiculous statements like, "Let's have humans too. Or, stop having your opinions down my throat. Which is funny considering I don't talk about vegan pissing unless someone asks me why I'm not eating anything at the buffet. Or, right now. <laughs> if you have done any research on nutrition and health, then you would know that these are not well thought out questions. For those of you who don't know what vegan means, it is a human being that does not consume or own any product derived from animals. I want vegan because of my love for animals. The reason it took me so long, I, I was vegetarian for two months before going vegan, and the reason it took me so long to become vegan is not because of my love for cheese being French and all, <laughs> but because I had not done any research about the subject. Once I started learning about what was good for my body and what made me feel good, I started realizing that vegan is what the human race should be. Before I start talking about the facts, I thought I should tell you guys what omnivore, carnivore, and herbivore means. An omnivore is an animal that eats both other animals and plants. A carnivore is an animal that only eats animals, and an herbivore is an animal that eats plants. Let's start with our <laughs> let's start with our mouths. Humans and herbivores need to chew their food before swallowing. We both have large molars and limited ability to open our mouths wide. Carnivores are the complete opposite. They do not need to chew their food, nor are they able to move their mouths from side to side. Omnivores resemble carnivores a lot more than us. You might be thinking something like, well, we have canines, doesn't that mean we should be eating meat? Here are photos of other herbivores with canines. <laughs> As for our intestines, a carnivore and omnivore's intestine is three to six times the length of the body. A, a <laughs> herbivore and human intestine is 10 to 12 times the length of our body. It takes a human being between 36 and 72 hours to digest red meat, and it only takes us 6 to 8 hours to digest plants. Carnivores do not need fiber in their diet. Herbivores and humans do. Our hands. Carnivores have claws, and so do omnivores. But humans and herbivores do not. We, we simply have fingernails. Do you not find it strange that human beings are the only animals on the entire planet that need a weapon in order to hunt? Why do I crave meat? Well, why do I eat? Why do I crave eating a packet of chips? You're either really, really hungry or you're lacking certain nutrients that can be found in meat. The same nutrients that can be found in plants. Things like B12, iron, and protein. In fact, in the meat industry, cows are not eating the food that they are supposed to. This means that they aren't getting any B12 naturally, but instead by injection. B12 is very important to have in the human body. So what does this mean for people? How are we supposed to get this nutrient? Where are we supposed to get it from? <laughs> or why aren't we getting it? It's because of the overly washed and pesticide-filled fruit and veggies. Here's a list of vegan sources for protein. Another really good source of protein that isn't listed up here is peanut butter, as long as you make sure that there's <laughs> as long as you make sure that there's no palm oil in it. Here's a list of plant iron. As you can see, there's a lot better plant 
sources for iron than meat. We need calcium so we can have strong bones. Yes, we do need calcium. No, we are not supposed to drink dairy. Did you know that humans are the only species to, to choose to consume milk? We choose to consume milk made by other animals. But it's still okay to drink milk because no one, no animals are hurt in the process. Unfortunately, that is not true. Artificial insemination is a very uncomfortable situation for both bulls and cows. After the cow has been inseminated, she becomes pregnant and therefore is able to produce milk. Once the cow has given birth, its child is re removed from her straight away, she is and then she is inseminated again. This continues for the entirety of her life. Uh, for her child, if, it, if her child is born a girl, she will be put in the exact same position as her mother. But if it is a boy, it will either be killed on the spot or transported to a different location to be turned into, into veal. Here is a photograph of what, a very non-graphic photograph of what the dairy industry looks like. As you can see, they are not able to run around or anything. <laughs> This is a source of calcium things. <laughs> yeah, <I'm just> <laughs> um, cholesterol has absolutely no nutritional benefit for the human body. This is because all the cholesterol that is needed for our body, we produce ourselves. The only foods that have cholesterol in them come from animals. This includes eggs and dairy. So for all of you that keep, keep saying that egg is a good source of protein, while it does have protein in it, it is not. It does increase your risk of heart-related disease at the same time. So why not just get your protein from a source that isn't trying to kill you? <laughs> but plants have feelings too. This is an interesting argument considering that <laughs> this is an interesting argument considering that animal the animals you're eating once ate plants, and the fact that we do in, indeed need to eat plants in order to survive, well, unlike meat. Although there has been research that shows that some plants can communicate with each other and the bugs around them, they, plants do not have a central nervous system, brain, or heart. This means that they have absolutely zero nerves, leaving it completely impossible to feel pain. There are two different types of plants that do feel pain, the sundew and the venus flycat but those aren't edible plants anyways. You can't be an environmentalist if you eat meat or drink dairy. This might seem a little confusing to everybody in the green school community as we're all seen as environmentalists. The reason being is the amount of land it takes up and the amount of CO2 that is produced. A study done by the University of Oxford scientists found that 7.2 kilograms of carbon dioxide is released by those who eat more than 100 grams of meat per day and that vegetarians and pescatarians release about 3.8 kilograms of CO2 per day. The vegan diet produces 2.9 kilograms. 51% of global greenhouse gas emissions are caused by animal agriculture, according to the World Watch Institute. As you can see up here, it takes approximately 250 baths full of water to produce one kilogram of meat. I hope that you guys never forget that there is no humane way to slaughter or take advantage of the innocent, regardless of species. And now that you have all of this information, I hope that you will make the right decision about what to put into your body. If not for the well-being of animals or the well-being of the planet, then do it for your own health. <coughs> Thank you.